All right, all right. I'll do a video on the Balance Blitz slider already. Have you ever played a game of Risk and then this happened? Holy Jiminy Cricket. So let's get right into it, guys. Here is how you can use the Balance Blitz slider to improve your Risk games. Um, Olive, I already have a video on using slider blitz. It has 800 views, which is more like more than all of your videos. Uh huh. Just kidding. What are you doing in my room right now? Ugh. Whatever. Okay, JJ, did you use editing in your video? Bruh, what even is editing? Uh, roll the intro. Let's just get on this together, man. All right, guys, the first technique that we want to go over right here is how you can minimize your losses when making an attack. Let's take a look right here at this crudely made scale that I made. The, the green part right here represents what balance blitz could potentially allow you to lose on an attack. The red part, which represents all possibilities, is what balance blitz will not allow. So in this hypothetical example, if 10 troops were to attack a one, balance blitz will allow one or maybe even two troops to be lost, but it will never allow three or four troops. Let's see what happens if we were to have a very large army attack, like 100 troops. As the percentage of troops is much higher now, 100 instead of 10, Balance Blitz sees extreme outcomes, such as losing like a 10 and 11 troops as something that needs to be avoided. But now something that losing like four, five, or even six troops is no longer considered an extreme outcome. So Balance Blitz will allow those outcomes to occur like true random. Therefore, the bigger your army gets, the more likely you can have an adverse effect on a roll. This is where the balance blitz slider comes into play. You can choose a number of troops that you want to attack with. So when the balance blitz tries to prevent any adverse extreme reactions from occurring, it won't consider your total troop army. Instead, it will only consider the number of troops attacking. If you have a low number of troops attack, you will prevent extreme unlikely events from happening when you attack. To illustrate this concept, we have three scenarios prepared for you. In this first scenario, I am going to attack with 300 troops around the entire classic board without using the balance blitz slider. So we can see I started with 300 troops here. I have ended with 238 troops. We can see that I have lost 62 troops. Now, let me show you a scenario where I use a balance blitz slider with perfect slider action. So to start this off right here, I am first, I have to spend a little bit of time fixing the slider. And every time before I attack, I am having my eye look at the bottom right hand corner. If that slider changes where the number of dice change, I immediately have to fix the slider. When armies are large, this doesn't happen that much. But you can see when it happens, it can take a long time to fix the slider and requires a lot of manual dexterity. Now let's finish this exercise and see how many troops we lose. So again, we can see we started with 300 troops. We ended with 254 troops. And this has led to a total of 46 troops lost. We lost a lot less troops using the balance blitz slider because it minimized any of our losses in a given attack. Now in the third scenario, I will show you using the balance blitz slider, but instead of using perfect dice, we're going to keep the slider at around nine troops. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to make it a little bit easier to attack. The slider won't go below using three dice, so we won't risk making a mistake. And we can see right here again, we started with 300 troops. We ended with 254 troops. So again, 
we end up with 46 troops lost. It's the same thing as if we were to use perfect dice. So what are the takeaways from this? First, if you're using a large army, you need to use the slider. It really will help you save a lot of troops. Secondly, if armies are smaller, you don't really have to use a slider. The losses will most likely be minimal and won't really affect your overall gameplay. And finally, you don't have to be perfect with the slider. If you're having a really large army, like several hundred, just leave it at around 10 to 20. It will make it so you won't be losing those four or five troops. You will only lose on most one to two troops. And now here's JJ Bra with tip number two. You can control the number of soldiers you can move over in a attack. What do we mean by this? When you attack a territory, you normally have to leave at least three troops fortifying it. These troops get stuck in dead ends and it could take several turns just to move them back to your main army. But what if I told you, you don't have to use three troops. You can just use two instead, one less than three. By moving the slider down to two troops, you can attack with two troops at once with a 98, I'm sorry, an 89% chance that is an A minus with some rounding. I will take it. There are a lot of maps which you can use this technique. Exactly, JG Bra. You can see right here on Supermax, you can attack all throughout the map, attacking those corners, leaving twos, allowing you to defend your gate with stronger bonuses. Mall of the Dead, look at all these corner spots and how you can leave twos when attacking. And finally, we see Red Sands Fort, where there are so many ways that you can use the slider blitz to attack with the two when attacking. The applicability is incredible. There are so many maps that you can do this on. Here's a list of them right here. There are so many maps that have corners where you can attack with a two instead of a three. But remember, rolls can still fail. Look at this example. 90% is not 100%. And finally, a last thing to keep in time, you can split two troops around in non-adjacent territories to attack multiple areas. With blizzards, there are so many options and opportunities. The third tip is the ability to attack an army without taking over the territory. What do we mean by this? I have a hypothetical game set up right here between six players. And we are just going to speed ahead to a pivotal moment in the game. Here, me, the stud that he is, all of XZ, has identified an opportunity for the blue player to get card blocked by the yellow player. I remove all of the blue player's territories, and they can only make one attack now towards the yellow player. So on their turn, ah, they don't even have a set. What unlucky little fellows they are. Eh, eh, eh. They go for the attack on yellow, and the yellow player is furious. But they recognize that if they are to attack the Blues 25, they would be opening up their much larger capital behind them. So what does the yellow player decide to do? When they trade in their set, they will first attack the blue player, again, using less troops. They have over 100 troops. See tip number one, kids. And then what they can do is by using the balance blitz slider, they can guarantee a 0% roll that will also reduce the number of troops of the blue player. By repeating this technique over and over again right here, we eventually will end up with them getting very few troops. They can then manual roll in order to get the remaining blue players dice low and successfully card block them. Now when the blue player goes to trade in and attack the yellow player, they will fail. Hooray! So JJ Bra, what did you think of this exercise right here? Well, um, if I were yellow, I wouldn't have done that. I would have waited a couple of turns or just let blue take the next territory that's behind his cap and then blue will be card blocked or they could just wait a couple turns and then card block blue later on i just don't think this is the best example but you know what olive it is what it is man jj this is why you're a semi-finalist 
And this is why I get knocked down the round of three of the My Free For All tournaments. <laughs> but there's more that this tip can do. Let's take a look at this game right here. Here, Blue and I are in an alliance, but if any of us attack purple, the other player will win. But look what the blue player does here. They only attack with a portion of their troops. Here, we're both working together to attack the weaker player without breaking the balance of the game. By us continuing to attack purple with smaller armies, they will continue to get weaker. Now let's see what ha happens on my turn. And look, I'm continuing to attack. It, this, this is a great way to work with other players to weaken someone when army sizes get large and just can't manual roll the dice. Fourth tip, when we're using true random, you don't want to use the slider blitz because it you can lose a, a 4v1 because it's true random. Anything can happen. Yep, let's take a look at this example right here. Here we're using three dice when attacking, but in true random, that's only about 90%. When you go for an attack, you can always fail. Also, if you need to attack just using one dice, there is no reason to be manual rolling it as we see right here. Since true random is the same where you blitz it or manual roll it, just slider blitz with one dice. It's so much faster and in time sensitive situations, it can save you a lot. And finally, if you're having a very large army when attacking, but you're worried about uh, doing a 2v1, which is more likely to fail, you can always use one less troop, which will allow you to save additional troops when attacking. A little true random may be a little bit crazy. There's always ways you can use a slider to help yourself out. And there we have it, guys. Here are all the different ways that you can be using the Balance Blitz slider. The last thing to keep in mind through all of these tips right here is that SMG has made this easier to use than ever before as a Balance Blitz slider resets itself at the end of every round. So I highly recommend incorporating this in your games. Thank you to JJ Bra for working with me on this video. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. This is Olive XC and JJ Bra signing out.